Although many of you had not uh, had your desserts as yet, I will take the liberty of proceeding with some of the introductions so we can get on to the main business we're faced with tonight. I would like to have you greet, and don't hold your applause, President Braithwaite and Mrs. Mrs. Braithwaite Alice. President Nelson and his wife, Afton. <laughs> Commissioner Bell and Betty. <laughs> we'll be hearing from Commissioner Bell later on this evening. Now, our Vice Chairman, Regent Peterson, and his wife, Harriet. A word about uh, our vice chairman. He's been on the board, I believe, since its inception, and uh, he's one of my favorites. Very, very responsible, good judgment, and I want you to know how much we appreciate your great work. And as one of the presidents said at a recent executive session, well, I guess everybody has to have a boss. Please say hello to my dear wife, Betty. <laughs> I don't know this next fella, but uh, I do know the lady next to him, and she's terrific. Our wonderful First Lady, a charming, dear woman who's doing such a good job, Norma Matheson. <laughs> Finally, uh, President Bishop and his wife, Carolyn. And you've already had a, a chance to hear from our great religious leader and educator, Regent uh, Neil Maxwell. Neil. It's a uh, long, long trip for institutional council members, and uh, regents are no strangers to lengthy travel. We are honored by the president of regents and council members from all over the state. I would like to take the liberty of introducing everyone individually, but that, of course, is not possible. But let's introduce you in groups. The institutional council members, would you please stand, recognizing particularly Chairman Browning and Chairman Gardner. Please stand and be recognized, please. And as I indicated, the regents are, have met on campus today, and uh, many of us are going to be meeting all day tomorrow, and we're delighted to be among you tonight. Regents, would you stand and be recognized? We do have two former regents with us, Ira Huggins and Nate Tanner. Gentlemen, delighted to see you again. Stand up. And then, of course, we're very pleased to have legislators with us, and they're here in large numbers. We're honored with your presence. Uh, the legislators of the state of Utah, would you stand and be recognized, please? And then we have our great friends that we are working closely with at all times, members of the State Board of Education, Dr. Belknap, Chairman. Would the State Board members please stand? I've already mentioned that we're always grateful to be with legislators, particularly when they have to sit and listen. There's a uh, story going around the uh, legislative halls. I can't vouch for its authenticity. It's 
about two leading figures. It involves Roger Rawson and Ron Halverson. It's the time in the general session when politicking was taking place to determine the organizational structure in the House of Representatives. Ron was quietly going about his business, lining up support for majority leader, and Ron was working for the minority leader position. And the capacity to succeed, naturally, was the necessary image. So Roger, it is reported, went out and bought a solid gold Cadillac. Well, when Ron learned that a Democrat was trying to act like a Republican, he went out and bought a solid gold Cadillac, too. Now the word spread fast. When Roger learned what had happened, he ordered a telephone for his gold Cadillac. And when Representative Halverson heard about this, he had a white telephone put in his car, just matched a little bit of red to match the red interior. And as Ron was driving to Salt Lake, he decided to call Roger, long distance on his telephone. He said, uh, hello, Ron, said Roger. I was just driving to Salt Lake and thought I'd give you a buzz, see how we might work things out on a nonpartisan basis for the good of the state. Oh, said Ron as he wheeled along, I'm so glad you called, and I do indeed want to talk to you about the, good, uh, about the state problems. But would you hold on a minute, Roger? My other phone is ringing. I uh, forgot to introduce my bosses, and that's the presidents of our institutions. Would you, other than those at the head table, would you stand? I believe we have others in the audience. I know David Gardner and Libby are here, and Glenn Taggart and his wife. Uh, thank you. Our new governor, not so new anymore, was elected on the platform that he was a nice guy from the private sector who was well trained to enter public life. I knew he would be able to face the rigors of public life, but I have since learned that he can dish it out too. He's just as nice as a kitten, says Mrs. Matheson, but we all know that he can be tough. As a matter of fact, I think he can be just about as tough as a grizzly that's been poked with a hot stick. He has the capacity to say no, and he can say yes to when it's earned. And he's already shown that he's more than capable to fill the shoes of his predecessor, except perhaps when it comes to golf. One of his golfing partners was telling me that once Scott sliced the ball deep into the woods, and a few minutes later they could hear him hacking around trying to cut his way out of the thicket. Finally, one of them stopped him and called, Hey, Scott, do you need some help trying to find your ball? And the answer came back, Heck with the ball, come find me. <laughs> but Cal Rampton is with me now practicing law, and his, his golf is just plain excellent. The other day I said to Cal, you know, Cal, you look terribly run down. Why don't you just lay off golf for a while and spend a good day in the office? <laughs> but that's all in fun. Of course, Cal's enjoying the practice and doing a great job. But back to Scott. When he was running for office, like any candidate, particularly a lawyer, he had some dissenters. One fellow said to Scott, you know, I wouldn't vote for you if you were St. Peter himself. And Scott replied, if I were St. Peter, I wouldn't get your vote anyway because you wouldn't be in my district. <laughs> With all sincerity, I am proud to have the opportunity to introduce Scott Matheson. In my opinion, he has a rare combination of strength, intelligence, and energy, and has surely made him already a fine, great governor. He's a man of warmth and ability and culture and toughness. And he says no and yes with equal informed intelligence and honesty. May I present His Excellency, the Governor of the State of Utah, the Honorable Scott M. Matheson.
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always a good idea to have a fellow Democrat introduce you at these occasions, isn't it? I had breakfast this morning down in Salt Lake and uh, had a chance to visit uh, with former Governor Rampton. I told him he could have his damn job back any time he wanted it. <laughs> I noticed that we did have a, a goodly number of legislators here, and I would like to call a little caucus later on and settle a couple of issues so we won't have to spend too much time on the third floor later on in the week, gentlemen. I'm sure it'll only take about 10 minutes after we're all through. I'm very pleased to be here to have a chance to just say a few brief words about three of our outstanding citizens who have participated in the field of higher education for so many years in our state and have made such great contributions which will last generations to come. I guess it's uh, a little difficult to face the responsibility as a Board of Regents to replace a third of your institutional presidents, but that is the responsibility of the Board. And having discussed the approach which they have taken, I know how carefully they get into the situation and attempt to find people who can serve equally as well, we hope, in, in the footsteps of those fine men, these fine men who will be leaving us so soon. And I would say about all three of these gentlemen, they have many, many great qualities, but they have one thing in common I have found. During budget sessions, they come down and they fight for money in my office like you can't believe. As a matter of fact, I think I better broaden that. All nine of them do that very, very well. And I think that's great. I think that uh, institutional uh, presidents have the responsibility of representing their institution with all of the vigor and all of the ability they can muster. And I have been uh, limped off, I have limped off the field of battle from these gentlemen many a time, but uh, I do like to come another day and try one more time whenever I can. I've known President uh, J. Nelson for many years. He's retiring after 30 years of faithful service at the Salt Lake Tech College in Salt Lake City. His efforts have benefited thousands of people, not only in our state, but in many other states as well. He has great leadership. He has a delightful personality. We'll surely miss him. He pretty much gave birth to the Salt Lake Technical College during his administration, and his outstanding job attests to his willingness and his ability to serve not only his students, but the industries and the businesses in Salt Lake and throughout the state. And if you can, Don, if you can find somebody that's as good as Jay, you better hire him. He's one fine man. I also have had a great opportunity to get to know President Royden Braithwaite. He comes from my part of the country. Uh, I can't say enough about uh, the people from my part of the country. He's an outstanding man. He has served uh, Southern Utah State College for 23 years. I had the opportunity when I first got out of law school to teach on the faculty of that great institution. And uh, I can tell you, it's one of the fine institutions in our state. And when President Braithwaite uh, came aboard 23 years ago, there was something around 400 students attending the college. I think it's nearly 2,000 now, isn't it, President Braithwaite? That shows you what happens to us in our state. We suddenly have come on stream in all of our institutions so thoroughly that the responsibilities continue to grow, and we have to have men who can assume those new responsibilities, and certainly Dr. Braithwaite has done that so well. His long years of service have earned him the love and the respect of all of us. Southern Utah State College stands as a monument to his dedicated efforts, his enthusiastic spirit, and if you can find anybody as good as Dr. Braithwaite, hire him too, Don. 
I've also had, uh, since, particularly since I've been governor, it just seems like five or six years, it's really only been a year and a half. But in that period of time, I've had many opportunities to meet with all of the presidents, many times in particular with President Joseph L. Bishop. He is a very young man, a very vigorous man, and has great ability and great capacity. He certainly has been instrumental in the six-year presidency here at Weber State College in developing this outstanding and beautiful campus and the academic programs into what is now one of the finest in the nation. His call as a mission president by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints provides him another new challenge. It will be an honor for him and I'm sure will benefit many, many people. If you can find anybody that good, hire him too, Don. It's hard to have great people leave outstanding performances serving the state of Utah. We will miss these fine men. We wish them well in whatever they intend to do. One of the great resources that we do have in our state is the willingness to pick up the cudgel and carry on the responsibilities and continue to grow and do the things that we need to do to continue to meet the challenges of the future. And I'm satisfied that with the performance and the example which these men have set, that those who follow them by taking the wise counsel and advice from their forerunners will continue to carry on the great traditions in our state. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, for your warm and thoughtful remarks. Betty says, I did not uh, emphasize how much we appreciate the uh, pleasure and honor of having members of the institutional councils of all three schools with us. Would you please all stand and be recognized? I have prepared a special brief introduction for Ted Bell. In my opinion, Dr. Bell moves with sureness and responsibility. He's forthright, he's honest, and that's in part responsible for his great success long before he came to us. He has already demonstrated his executive leadership and his abilities to the complete satisfaction of the regions who he serves as our chief executive officer. He rep represents a positive force for a united system of higher education in Utah. And we are fortunate indeed to, to have a man of the caliber of Ted Bell at our helm. I'd like to have Dr. Bell make some special presentations. Thank you very much, Don, and it's a real privilege to be able to make these presentations on behalf of the, uh, of the regents. Would President uh, Joseph L. Bishop uh, come up, please, Joe? Now, uh, Joe, when you're down there in Argentina, entertaining as a mission president. We hope you'll load this tray up, but leave this middle part open here so you can look at it and read President Joseph L. Bishop in recognition of six years, it may seem like longer, Joe, but six years of faithful service signed the State Board of Regents May 1978. And very sincerely, we appreciate the great service that you've rendered. You came to this institution at an extremely difficult period of time in its history. And all of us that are proud of Weber State owe you a debt of gratitude for the service that you've rendered. So on behalf of the regents and your colleagues, your fellow presidents, 
and others from the Utah System of Higher Education, Joe, it's my great honor to present to you uh, this tray as a memento of our respect for you and also that it may bring back some fond memories and some joyous recollections of the time when you served as president of this great institution. We'll be thinking of you and we wish you the very best in this great new challenging opportunity that you have, Joe. It's a pleasure to present this to you at this time. Just a, Ted, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just occurred to me that uh, when regents retire, they're given a board. And in that uh, uh, comparison, I think it has probably been worth the, the strife because uh, we're receiving something a little more expensive, Ted. And uh, I suspect when you retire, they might uh, give you... Um, Big board. <laughs> In all seriousness, uh, we, I speak for my wife and I, thank you most sincerely for the opportunity that we have enjoyed, seriously, the growth that has taken place not just here on the campus, but uh, to us. I think we have grown with the experience. We've learned to uh, love hard-headed regents, the most dis difficult task, I suspect, that uh, one can be challenged with, uh, Don, to really understand the uh, inner workings of uh, this great system of higher education in this great state it has been a unique privilege that we have enjoyed. And we thank you for this opportunity. And I can assure you that uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, we will display this as one of the greatest things that has uh, come into our lives. Thank you very much. Now, if President Royden Braithwaite would come forward, please. Uh, right in your uh, normal size, so you won't have to move this microphone back up like that abnormal fellow that was here before you. Uh, what, what's your height? Uh, I had a uh, fellow that worked with me when I was state superintendent, Norman Hyatt, and we used to call him Omar for Omar Khayyam, the tent maker. I used to tell him that he bought his clothing from Salt Lake Tent and Awning. And I got away with that for a long time, Royden, until one day he said, well, that's better than getting it from the little boys' department in pennies. <laughs> so <clears throat> I quit harassing him after that. <clears throat> Imagine serving as a president especially in the same institution continuously for 23 years. That's the remarkable accomplishment of, of Royden uh, Braithwaite. And we hope that you and Alice will serve some real choice refreshments to guests and that you'll look at this tray often and read here, President Royden C. Braithwaite, in recognition of 23 years of faithful service, May 1978, and it's a pleasure on behalf of all of your colleagues, your fellow presidents and others in the system, and on behalf of the Board of Regents, uh, Royden, for me to present to you this memento and express to you on behalf of all of us our great admiration and our best wishes to you, and we hope that the years ahead will be joyous ones for you. And we just wish you the very best now as you launch out into new adventures as you put down the presidency 
of Southern Utah State College. Royden, it's a pleasure to present this to you. When the late Arthur Bruin, president of Dixie College, lay dying of leukemia in a local hospital and uh, I think later in St. George, I used to visit him. And once when I didn't visit him, just before he died, a colleague of mine visited with him. And he said, tell Royden if, it isn't, if ever he feels it isn't worth it, it is. That's been a source of inspiration to me through the years. And uh, I want Ted Bell, Don Holbrook, the Board of Regents, governors of the state with whom I have worked, the legislators, and especially my colleagues, Southern Utah State College and those wonderful students, how grateful Alice and I and her family are for the opportunity to have lived there, worked there, had our being there. We. Uh, appreciate friendship very much and when you come to the festival we hope you will the Shakespeare festival in the years to come that you'll come to our home there and we will <clears throat> load up this uh, tray with good refreshments we'll even get permission maybe to go to the ranch have uh, a few steaks again and I'd like uh, the governor and the legislators uh, to uh, know that I've learned one thing about all this that money comes hard you fight for every dollar you get, as the governor has said. But it's very true, the ancient uh, Chinese proverb that says, man must sit for a long time with mouth open before roast duck fly in. You know, uh, this next man is, is sort of a two-time loser. He's a, a little bit of a slow learner. He had me as his commencement speaker twice. The, the first time was while I was state superintendent, and he was holding commencement in uh, West High. And I was delivering a magnificent or oration. And in the middle of it, he doubled up, and uh, the... The sirens uh, started wailing, the ambulance came, and they hauled him away to the hospital. And I don't know to this day uh, why that happened, because, Jay, it was an outstanding graduation speech. <laughs> and if you'd come up, I'd like to examine that with you a little bit more. President Jay Nelson. <clears throat> Jay, I remember back in the days, now there aren't many others here that are this salty, when uh, George Dewey Clyde was the governor and we were out on that Redwood Road uh, campus. Everyone knew you were never going to build anything out there. And then for 15 years the heating plant stood out there and we had to hire somebody to keep the heating plant from freezing up before we had any buildings to heat. But we pulled down ceremonially the old barn out there to, uh, in a big cloud of dust at the time we, we launched that uh, uh, campus. Jay lived through the period of time when, even before that, when uh, Bracken Lee, that's before I became a, a wet back from over the Idaho border and came to Utah, but uh, when Bracken Lee vetoed the appropriation and they had to survive for, I think it must have even been a biennium in those days before they got money to operate on. But Jay is, has been Mr. used to be Trade Tech, now Mr. Utah Tech College. If an institution is the lengthened shadow of the man, it, it surely is with, with President uh, Jay Nelson. We've known his lovely wife Afton for a long time, and what a great, solid, courageous person uh, as she is, along, of course, with, with Alice and Carolyn. But, Jay, it is a real pleasure to present to you now, on behalf of the regents and, and your fellow presidents and the other persons here from the system of higher education, this token of our affection and esteem to you, 
and we hope that you and Afton will read often off from this uh, tray. President J. L. Nelson, in recognition of 30 years of faithful service presented to you on behalf of your colleagues in the State Board of Regents, May 1978. Jay, it's just a real pleasure to present this to you. Thank you for the wonderful service that you've rendered to education in the state of Utah and the great example you've been in rendering that. Congratulations and thank you very much for your service. It was just uh, 13 years ago when I joined that august club that uh, the commissioner spoke of. Several of you are members of that club also. He's speaking of the Coronary Heart Club. I'm not recommending it. While I was recuperating from that ordeal, my doctor used to pass out uh, choice little philosophical, philosophical tidbits. I remember one Jim he quoted very, very well. He said, we're on this earth for such a short period of time. Let's not hurry. Let's not worry. And let's take time to smell the flowers as we go along. My ancestors practiced that philosophy. If my grandfather missed a train, you know what he'd do? He'd just relax and wait for another one tomorrow. And if my dad missed a plane, the world hadn't come to an end. Really, it hadn't. He knew there would be another one coming along in a couple of hours. But not me. If I miss one section of a revolving door, my whole day's shot to hell. <laughs> and you're that way, too. I heard someone say the other day that a man goes through life like he's trying to read Playboy magazine with his wife turning the pages. <laughs> Well, now that I'm approaching retirement, I hope that I'll have time to remember the admonitions of my doctor and take time to smell the flowers as I go along. But before I reach that stage, I sincerely would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to the literally hundreds of great citizens who have helped us along the way in vocational education. And I speak of the governors. I speak of a tremendous advisory council who has assisted that institution all these years. I speak of the State Board for Vocational Education, the State Board of Regents, the staffs of those two boards. Certainly you legislators, I have learned to admire and respect you and appreciated the opportunity to work with you. Most of all, I suppose, I should express my gratitude and appreciation to members of the college staff, anyone who can put up with the idiosyncrasies of a president for 30 years certainly deserves commendation. So I'm very, very grateful to my staff. And particularly, I am grateful to my family and to my loving, charming wife for the support and assistance that she has given me all these many years. I appreciate and love every one of you. Thank you very much. As you can see, our honored guests, our presidents, are genuine human beings, full of compassion for the individual and love for the institutions and the students they have served. Their special qualities and personalities have served to develop each of their respective institutions into centers of service and fulfillment. Now still at the middle point in their lives and blessed with respect and admiration and strengthened by that wonderful feeling of inner satisfaction which goes with the knowledge that a job has been well done, they go their separate ways. All still to continue lives of service. The short of the matter is that the good reputations of their respective schools are inseparably linked with their names. 
Joy, Joe, Royden, and Jay, please take our proud and fond and sad farewell and our best wishes into your new responsibilities. Let me quote Longfellow, appropriate to the occasion, appropriate to the time. The night shall be filled with music, and the cares that infest the day shall, shall fold their tents like Arabs and as silently steal away. Thank you and good night.